Okay, welcome everyone to uh, our first at-home online whiteboard lecture. Um, starting off with the uh, first area uh, of atomic structure and interatomic bonding. Uh, this will be number one uh, video from on YouTube here. Uh, but things are changing, um, hopefully, maybe. Uh, and the fact that July or June first, they're going to start allowing people to come back on campus, as far as just administrators and and some faculty doing certain things. So, uh, but no students yet. Um, so I am petitioning to try to go back on campus and at least do some of these uh, lectures uh full time on in a classroom without any students and, and they'll just videotape that and then uh they will we will send you the link to that lecture and it'll be a full hour long or whatever it's going to be without all these breaks uh due to the YouTube constraints so hoping that will work uh so this be this uh this summer session will be kind of a hybrid mixture of some of these YouTube whiteboard lectures and hopefully some from the uh, classroom with a full board and, and a full time slot. So we'll do the best we can and we'll get through everything. So uh, let's get started. Okay, as I said, this is, uh, and by the way, uh, my name is George Gray. Uh, I forgot to mention that on the uh, first uh, little introduction video. Uh, and it's George Gray, G-R-A-Y, and here to be your instructor and to help you get through this and to learn as much as you can with respect to materials and the methodology in selecting the correct material for the application. All right, so it all starts with matter, of course. Uh, matter generally occupies space, uh, possesses mass, can exist either as a solid or liquid or a gas. Uh, and then it can be broken down um, into either pure substance or what we call a mixture. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna go uh, uh, basically uh, talking emphasize pure substances, and from that we can break that down into further two two uh, categories. So a pure substance is matter having an invariant chemical composition, which means it doesn't change. Um, and it has distinct properties uh, and can maybe either an element or a compound uh, these pure substances now an element uh, is simply uh, the fundamental substance that cannot be broken down or separated in any simpler substances by any chemical methods and of course you recognize elements because they are cleverly on the periodic table of elements and we'll go through that uh, table um, in a short amount of time, um, probably not today, but uh, the next one we will cover the periodic table of elements. Now, uh, I picked iron right here in the middle here, of course, and uh, iron is a, a pure element. Uh, and of course, there are about 92 uh, occurring in nature, 92 elements occurring. In. There's 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 many more, but those are kind of uh, synthesized and. Uh, not really occurring in nature so we'll concentrate on the ones that are occurring in nature then there's a uh, compound so so these pure substances get broken down either to an element or a compound a compound basically is a substance that's composed of two or more elements in very fixed proportions and can be separated into simpler substances and elements but only by uh, chemical methods and a good example here would be sodium chloride or your local uh, table salt so, of course, all matter is composed of atoms. Uh, all matter composed of atoms, and atoms are the basic structural units. And, you know, when building things, when building materials, etc., there's nothing smaller as the basic building block. It doesn't get any smaller than that. It can't split it in half or anything, of course. Uh, and so they're the smallest part of an element. And that and that smallest part is retains the properties of that element so it doesn't get any smaller than that so uh, I'm going to uh, make sure you get a I'll email you a uh, handout on what I'm calling the atomic structure fundamentals and I'm gonna cover a little bit of that right now and then I'll go over and detail that handout a little bit later uh, and I'll have that up on the board uh, one way or the other 
Uh, but let's talk about some subatomic particles. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know already, uh, just basically from your basic chemistry classes. But in an atom, of course, there are three subatomic particles. Basically, the electron, which is where everything happens. Um, and, of course, it is a, a negative charge. And here is the electron symbol here. Uh, and then there, uh, within the uh, nucleus, we have uh, the proton and the neutron. Of course, proton is positive charge. Neutron is is uh, zero charge, um, no charge. Uh, and so let's look at the, the structure of that. And, and we're looking at this as a basic um, structure that is, is following Bohr's uh, planetary model of an atom and um, so and then the one we chose was neon uh, neon right here and it has an atomic number of 10 uh, or also known as the proton number uh, but more about that later uh, okay so this is a representation of that again planetary model what we know as Bohr's model of an atom and this this represents all these tiny little circles represents the uh, the uh, nucleus, which of course is going to be comprised of the uh, protons and neutrons in here. All right, now as I said, where all the action is happening and where all where all the uh, the uh, bonding takes place is with the electrons, and these are, these are these outer shells that go around this uh, nucleus. And uh, neon, since it has an atomic number of ten. Uh, it will have 10 uh, electrons total in these shells. Now, these shells uh, are, are very distinct. They all have distinct energy levels uh, in, these, in these shells. Each orbital has a very discrete energy level, and they all kind of have a tendency to, to uh, be the smallest uh, or, or the least energy first uh, and, then, and then build up. Um, and... They, they are comprised in these different shells or quantum uh, shells like K, L, and M or shell 1, 2, and 3, which is I've got designated down here. Uh, but, but essentially what we're looking at here, the most important part of this really in dealing with bonding is what the electron configurations look like. Uh, the, the, the disbursement of those electrons throughout these different shells. So if we look at neon, and I tried to color code this, but uh, the first the first shell is the S shell. Now all of these shells uh, have one orbital, okay, and each the maximum of electrons per orbital is two. That's the maximum. So what they do is they build up all these different uh, uh, shell numbers uh, to build this up to you know a great number. So uh, this first green little orbital around this nucleus is the S shell or s orbital it has two potential electrons and so it's obviously uh filled up because we need to get to a count of 10. so <clears throat> this green shell is at first and it's the s shell okay and uh it's also known as the the uh, quantum number k or letter designation k uh or what we're calling the first shell or shell number one all right, so after that, that's all it can comprise. That first uh, shell is just one. Now, the second shell has two orbitals, okay? It has an S orbital and a P orbital. Well, the S orbital only has two possible. The P orbital has six possible because it has three of these, three of these uh, um, uh, orbitals here within this P shell. So there's one, two, three. And so all three of these can contain up to two electrons, and they're completely full. So um, what we've got here then is the green uh, first shell, S, 1s, and it's, it's full, so it's 1s2, so that's the total of two uh, electrons. And then the second shell uh, is, is just like the you know this 1s, it's a, but it's a 2s. And since it only can have two, that's again two, so that's two, four. And then the P, now the P is still, it's a two, and it's designated as a 2S and a 2P, just like this is a 1S. And we'll get into 3S, 3P, etc. But um, the, the 2P has three of these orbitals, three of these uh, 
shells here and it, again they can only contain two each so uh, and since this is 10 we're going to need six and of course that's what we've got three orbitals two each that's six so we have two four six that's ten total okay so that is the completely stable uh, or, or, or what we're calling a um, an element and that is a noble gas since, since uh, neon is a gas is what they call a noble gas or noble elements found on the far right hand side of the periodic table of element elements so let's look at what these let's look at some more examples of these electron configurations and we'll show you how these energy uh, levels uh, work here the energy states so let me remove this board and we'll put in another board if I don't hit the frame let me make sure it's all lined up here for you okay I think that's pretty well it all right so now let's look at some examples of some other elements and their electron configuration so this is the uh, the models and the electron configurations and the and the atomic numbers uh, so start with the of course the the, the smallest lightest hydrogen uh, it has atomic number of one so uh, again this 1s shell will just have one electron in it so it's desig the electron designation would just be 1s1 and the atomic number would be one okay so helium moving all the way over again to that far side uh, it's the next in order, so it has two, and that one S2, so it's it's full. Uh, so helium is one of those noble gases because it cannot bond with anything. It has nothing to give, nothing to take as far as the electrons. That's what most of the bonding is about, which we'll get into later. And so this has the atomic number, helium has atomic number of two. So let's move up a little bit and let's go to an element known as fluorine. All right. Now, again, it has an atomic number of nine. So we know we're going to have to get it above the 1s shell and the 2s shell. So let's look at this. Uh, the green again is that 1s shell. Uh, and then here is the 2, which again has a potential uh, of. of actually eight because we have two s2 and then this could be six so it could be eight total um so here here we have um actually we've got seven here so we have two s2 and I'm, what i'm not doing is i'm not showing the individual like i did on the other screen i'm just showing this as the 2s which again potential of 2s2 2p6 here um so this only needs, since the 2s2 would be full, of course, we'd only need five to get nine. So there's one available, one available uh, electron. So this is a very, very uh, electron, uh, has a very high electronegativity. I mean, it is, it is needing only one more electron to complete its outer shell and become very stable. Because that's ultimately what most elements are trying to do is to uh, become stable and have that outermost shell completely full. So they're going to give away electrons if they don't have very many or they're going to try to take uh, if they just need, you know, just one. So, uh, and that 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 talks more about the type of bonding that's involved, a bonding that's involved, which we'll get to. Alright, so its overall electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Alright, so it gives us a 9. And so this, the the valence shell here is this this is the valence shell this is the outer outer shell and this is the only shell that has any has any potential for doing any any bonding or giving or taking away of electrons it's always the outer shell is referred to as the valence shell regardless of its of its electron count it's always the outermost shell the complete shell 
So let's move way up to sodium here. Sodium has an atomic number of 11. So again, we'll go through through the gyrations here. We got one S2 full, and then this two S2 is completely full because we need 11. So two S2, two P6, that's maxed out. The second shell is maxed out. So now we move into the third shell, the third shell, um, which is M. The second shell is designated L, so we have K, L, and M uh, so far. And so we only need one electron, so we're only going to get to 3s1. Uh, so again, it needs one more to, to satisfy this, to get this, this out valence shell stable. Uh, and so ultimately, the valence shell on this sodium is just a 3s1. All right, and that is the valence shell. That's the only one it can have to uh, do any potential bonding with. So again, this is very important because... Uh, the fact that this just has one needs one more, uh, it's liable to give up one or take one, um, depending on what's what's available, what's what's next, what it's trying to bond with, and how it's going to bond, whether whether covalently sharing or ionic, uh, just transferring of those electrons. So uh, I will go over this uh, uh, probably starting with this next lecture because I'm about to run out of time here. Uh, but I'll go over this arrangement of electrons and electron configurations at handout, which I've titled again the Atomic Structure Fundamentals, which you'll have a copy of. I'll go over that, that handout probably starting off in the next one. But just to, to uh, clarify a couple things right quick, the valence electrons, okay, in these outer shells, when I have double element lined here, uh, those are the electrons in the unfilled shells, the outermost shells, and are the only electrons capable of participating in doing any kind of bonding with any other atoms, and they tend, they also tend to control the chemical properties um, of those elements. So very, very important what's going on on those outermost shells known as the valence uh, shells or valence electrons. And as I told you before, these electrons have discrete energy levels or states, and they tend to occupy the lowest available energy states. So let me show you what that actually uh, relates to right quick. Um, erase this and show you a, a, a diagram kind of a schematic of what that what that's really about how that works because we're going to look at these okay so, um, so these would be the electron the electron energy states all right so uh, we would start if we're looking at energy increasing going from bottom to top, all right? Um, then we're, we're down here, we're looking at uh, the first one we have here was of course the 1s, all right? Uh, and then we moved up to 2s and then 2p. Again, the energy levels are increasing. Uh, and then we move up to 3s and 3p, and there goes the timer. Um, now, that also 3 has a D level to it also, but the D level is actually has greater energy than the 4S. So the 4S would go next. In other words, when you're doing electron configurations, you wouldn't, after you fill up the P6, you wouldn't go directly to the, to the 3 to the 3 uh, D energy shell. You'd have to go to 4S because it has less energy uh, level than the uh, 3D. So you would go 4S and then you would move up to the 3D and then uh, and then keep going 4P, 4D like that and on. Okay so this is the only little kind of hiccup right here uh, is where you go from 3P to a 4S and then to the next available 3D. But uh, it's not critical, but that's just when you see these electron states, you'll wonder why, what happened, what happened to 3D, why we're going 4S. But again, it's all about these uh, discrete energy levels. All right, it's all about the discrete energy levels, and they tend to occupy the lowest, tend to occupy the lowest uh, available energy state. 
Okay, so we'll start on that handout on the next one, and we'll see you, see you back then.